Welcome to every, everybody to this um, introduction to linguistics cohort at BGA. So I'm going to start with the website, so it's a little metalinguistics here. Um, so the website here, lcbga.blogspot.com, this is just a go-to place for lots of information about linguistics cohort. So what we do is prepare for linguistics olympiads that train essentially they're about computational linguistics. How do you approach language in a scientific and analytical logical way to kind of problem solve, right? This is the field that basically um, is of great interest to government agencies like CIA, NSA, the military. Uh, it's big in business with things like um, Google, uh, the OK Google or Siri or any kind of you know, voice recognition and voice processing, language processing stuff. So Google Translate would be another example. All of these kinds of things uh, where, you know, computers or electronic devices are interacting with human language are all based on computa computational linguistics. So the analytical kind of scientific way of approaching language. So we hack languages, I like to call it, um, it's like what computer hackers do, but we're doing it on language. All right, so here's the website, lcbga.blogspot.com. Uh, Linguistics Cohort is a training team here at BGA. Um, anybody here is welcome to come to our meetings um, in the upper school uh, this year for 2018-2019. Um, it's going to be a gold club. Um, for the middle school, anybody from middle school is welcome to come. Now, it's uh, that you can see here our current points ranking, so I want to follow that and just show you. This is where I, I set points in. So you can see so far this year, three people have turned in some puzzles, and you can see their current total points. So when you turn in training puzzles, or if you do puzzles during a competition, the points that you earn will get entered there. Uh, competition points are uh, usually doubled, and for actually the national competition, I actually triple those because those are super hard problems. All right, um, so notice if you go down further, it says check out some training videos here. So that will go to my training video site, which is on YouTube. So let me just sign in here. And you can see I have some linguistics training videos. All right. Um, there are a variety of things there. You can see an intro one here. I'll probably post this video on this site on my YouTube uh, handle. So I'm Abram Ring on YouTube. And again, you can just follow that link to get to it. Now let's go back. Um, it also says here are some sample puzzles provided by MTSU. So if we try that link, you can see the sample stuff they have for the MTSU, which is what I like to call the state competition. It's open to anybody across the state. It's the oldest competition in Tennessee run by Dr. Aleka Blackwell, who also uh, is involved in the national competition. Uh, there are some online practice problems at Princeton, so if you want to practice some online, uh, there are links to a variety of puzzles. The green circle puzzles are the easiest, and then you can move on blue square a little harder, black diamond, and then the double black diamond are the hardest. So there you go. Uh, a variety there. Some of those actually score them online. Um, Others of them, if it doesn't score it online, you can complete it on your own and then I'll score it for you. But a lot of them, especially the, the earlier ones, the easier ones, it'll score it for you. Um, there's some online problems linked here from past NACLO competitions. That's North American Computational Linguistics uh, Olympiad. We are hosting site for this in the spring, so that's one of the competitions we do here. Um, any of these practice puzzles that you're doing, if you want to do them to complete them for points, the LC points, which I just followed the link to show you the current point standings, um, if you want to do those for points, you can't use references like dictionaries, websites. You also can't help each other unless you're working together as a team during a competition or if you want to work as a team during training on just practice puzzles, that's fine, let me know, because what I'll do is I'll just split the points halfway. But you can't use dictionaries, websites, grammar books, anything like that on the puzzles. Puzzles are designed so that 
um, you should be able to complete the puzzle and get all or a reasonable amount of the points by using logical and analytical processes, okay? So, you know, depending on what you're good at, some puzzles you might get all of them, sometimes you might just get half the points, but you're supposed to be able to solve the puzzles without any outside resources. It might take you a while, it might be tricky, some puzzles will be easier for some people, harder for others, um, but you're supposed to, if you do them for the points, not use outside resources. All right, so our meetings for linguistics cohort and the training sessions that we do are every other Friday, Gold Friday, on the upper school um, schedule. And that's during the morning break, um, which is right after our second period class. And of course, in the middle school academic building, my room is 32. It's on the end near the upper school. We always have snacks during our meetings. Um, so if you wanna come have a snack and just you know see what we're up to, please do. Um, Latin students, by the way, at, for every 10 points that they earn in, in linguistics cohort, they get two points to add to a quiz grade. Um, so that's a little incentive for specifically Latin students. But we welcome all students at BGA. So if you have friends in other languages and you're a Latin student, go ahead and recruit them. They can work in a team with you. All right, a couple other suggestions for people interested in doing linguistics. Number one, start to learn another new language on Duolingo could be anything, something you're interested in, German, Russian, Chinese, you know, Danish, Klingon, High Valerian, which is from the Game of Thrones. They've got a variety of stuff on there. It can be fun for you and it can give you new insights into that particular language as well as many other languages. Uh, if you join uh, on Duolingo, set up your account, um, then you can join my LC class by following the link where it says join here, right? And then you can see, aha, I can join the classroom. All right, I'm going to join it. And you can see I was learning some high valerian there. Okay. I have a variety, actually, of languages that I'm learning. And if you follow me, you can see my progress on Duolingo. All right. And then if you're in the app, if you have the Duolingo app, you can use the code XGKJWD. And that will allow me to view your progress so I can see how you're doing. And it just... It's nice to have friends on Duolingo because you can get reminders from the app of how they're doing, how you're doing, uh, you know, so it just kind of keeps everybody interested in, in doing it. So number two suggestion, spend some time exploring weird new language facts on Omniglot. Um, this is a great website and basically it has all kinds of stuff about languages around the world. So different alphabets and writing systems you can learn about, constructed scripts, are, you know, somebody just invents a way of writing and it could be uh, for a fictional language or it could be an invented way of writing for an already existing language like English. Um, you can learn weird language facts um, like idioms, proverbs, family words. Family words are different language to language. You can learn about numbers. Some We have a base 10 number system in English. Some languages use different bases. They might use a base 4 or a base 20 system or they might have multiple bases in their system. So you can learn all kinds of weird language facts here. It's just a fun place to explore and learn some stuff. Um, you can email me, abram.ring at mybga.org, or come just see me in my room to find out more. I have printed puzzles in my room, so you can pick up puzzles and start working on some in your own time. Even if you can't come to our training meetings on the other, every other Friday, you can you know pick up puzzles, do them on your own. You can do the, the videos that I have for training on your own. You can do the online practice that I link to on your own. Now we have a year-long point competition. I went to the, the link to show you the three people that had already turned in points so far this year. Um, by the end of the year, some people will have hundreds of points. Last year, we had over 600 points for Jake Brown and a couple other people um, who had earned almost 300 points, right? Um, but during the year, we have this competition. Uh, all the training puzzles you do, anything you do in a competition, uh, in an Olympiad um, will add up to your total. So this is really for bragging rights, but also by the end of October, whoever's at the top there in the upper school will be the primus pilus or president, uh, literally means first spear for uh, his or her level. And that will be, so upper school will be the primus pilus of the upper school and the middle school high student will be the middle school primus pilus. 
that's kind of an, an honor, and I like to look to those people as leaders to recruit, especially in the upper school. There are some responsibilities involved in that, but just as a, a face to put on, on our team. Um, then also some things that I want to tell you about are the competitions. There are three competitions we're involved with each year. We have our BGA Fall Linguistics Olympiad, which I call the Buffalo, B-F-L-O. Um, that is the second Saturday day in November this year. That's going to be Saturday, November 10th. Um, everybody's encouraged to compete. I like to have as many people as possible. Um, you can compete alone, either middle school or upper school level. Do as many puzzles as you can on your own, or you can compete in a group, in a team. Uh, up to Usually I do up to three people in a team there. And so then you can work with others, and that might be others from your class. It might be others who are in a different language class, but just happen to be friends you work with. And again, if you work alone, you would essentially earn those points, and you double them because it's an Olympiad to go into your score count. If you're working in a group, uh, they would double because it's a competition, but then be split up into two, you know, half or a third of it, depending on how many people are in your group working together. Also, all upper school members and any middle school members whom, uh, who are interested, I would love to have compete in the NACLO national level competition. That's on Thursday, um, let's see, I think it's January 24th, 2019. Um, I will check that and make sure it's updated. But it's always on a Thursday in late January. Um, so I'd love to have everybody compete. That is all individual, so only individuals or no group competitions in that. And it's a qualifying competition if you do well on that. And I've had people get really close, um, but I'd love to have somebody qualify. It's a really rare and competitive thing to do. But if you qualify on that, then you would go to the invitational round of nationals, which is a great national honor to have. If you cleared at that level, which maybe one day we'll get someone, and I would love to see that. That's my, my long-term goal, is to get somebody to clear on the, to the Invitational and then to actually make uh, the top, in the top scores on the Invitational exam or Olympia. If you do that, that's how you get on the national team. The national team travels internationally. They travel to another country and compete at the International Linguistics Olympiad, uh, which is IOL. All right, so the last thing is that there is another competition at MTSU. This is one I, I like to think of as the state competition, and that's probably going to be in March. It's usually been in March the last couple of years. Um, there is a small fee for that one. The other competitions are free. Um, that one has a fee of $15. It's really um, very affordable. Um, that includes T-shirt and lunch. That's what it's been the past couple of years, so I imagine it'll be that or around that uh, this this year too. Um, so far, every year I have been transporting people. Um, it's possible if we only had a couple people that you we'd have to work out transportation, but usually I take people. Uh, I usually have a mini bus here from BGA, and we all go together. Um, parents are welcome to come if they want to, but usually it's just the kids um, that go with me and we have a good time competing. There, as at the BFLO, you can compete alone or you can compete in teams. Now there, they have a little different team structure. You can compete in pairs, two at a time, or in teams of up to four people. Um, so it gives you more opportunities of different ways to compete. Uh, if you're not as sure of yourself, you might wanna compete in a pair or in a team of four. Or again, in the BFLO here, in November at BGA, you might want to compete in one of those teams of up to three people. All right, well, hopefully that made sense. Hopefully you learned a few things about what linguistics is like here at BGA, and I'd love to see a lot of you on the every other Friday meetings, and just drop by and see me whenever. Thank you all.